everyone, I'm Teacher Neff, and welcome back to Statistics and Probability class. The concepts you have learned in the previous lessons are enough for us to solve problems involving hypothesis testing on population mean. Once the computed value of the test statistic is derived, you need to compare it with a critical value. Hence, you need to refer to Z-table and T-table. Note that if the absolute value of the computed value is greater than the absolute value of the critical value, we, re we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. However, if the absolute value of the computed value is less than the absolute value of the critical value, we accept the null hypothesis and we reject the alternative hypothesis. Rejecting a null hypothesis does not indicate that it is incorrect. It is just that the data suggests enough evidence to, dis to disagree with it. In the same manner, accepting null hypothesis does not indicate that it is correct. Only, there is no enough evidence to prove it, that it is a false. Before we have examples, let me present the steps in solving problems involving hypothesis testing on population mean. First step is take the null hypothesis H sub 0 and the alternative hypothesis H sub A. Second step, identify the appropriate test statistic to be used, then compute its value. Third step, locate the critical value for the test using either the critical Z value table or the T table. Then draw the critical region corresponding to the critical value. Fourth step, draw a conclusion based on the computed test statistic value and the critical value of the text. Now, I guess you are ready to apply this in the following examples. Example 1. Given null hypothesis is mu or population mean is equal to 37, the alternative hypothesis is that mu or population mean is less than 37. Another given, the sample mean which is equal to 36.5, and then again the population mean 37, which is stated as the null hypothesis. Then the sigma or the population standard deviation, which is 2.8. The sample size n, which is 90. Use alpha or significance level equal to 0 0.05 and interpret the result. So the step one is to identify the null and alternative hypothesis, which in this case, in example one, are already given. So we are done with, with step one. Step two is to identify the test statistic to use. And since the sample size n is greater than 30, and the population standard deviation is given, then we will use the z-test. And part of step 2 is to compute for the z-value, computed z-value. So this is the formula. z is equal to the uh, sample mean minus population mean over this fraction or the quotient uh, when the population standard deviation is divided by the square root of the sample size. And by substitution, this is what we will get. Z is equal to 36.5 minus 37 over 0 0.05 divided by square root of 90. We just substituted the given values to, to the corresponding variables in, in the equation or in the formula. And then by using your calculator, of course, you will subtract this first and then uh, divide these two, get first the square root of 90, then divide 0 0.05 by that square root, the value of this square root, and then divide these two. The difference between these two divided by the quotient of these two. And this is what you will get, negative 1.694 and then for the third step we have to identify the um, we call that the critical z value this is the computed z value now we would like to know in step three the critical z value and we will be using again this table the z table 
from the Z table, since this is left tailed, example one is left tailed, uh, that is, um, we can get that from the alternative hypothesis, which tells us that the population mean is less than 37. So this is a left tailed, left tailed um, test. And from the left tailed test, and the alpha which is 0 0.05 we can see that the critical z value is negative 1.645 and then let us draw the rejection region from the computed t value or z z value and the critical z value so, in this figure, we can see that the critical value, which is negative 1.645, is located here, and the shaded region will be the rejection region. And the unshaded part is the acceptance region. Since the level of significance is 0 0.05, then that tells us that this unshaded part, the remaining part under the curve, is 0 0.95 because the total area is 1.0. So if this is 0 0.05, again, that comes from the level of significance, then the remaining part or the acceptance region is 0 0.95. Now, if the critical value is located on this part, that is the border between the rejection region and acceptance region, uh, we can see from the figure that the computed Z value falls within, within the rejection region, which is negative 1.694. Or that means the absolute value, the absolute value of this is greater than the absolute value of the critical, uh, critical value or if we consider the figure, we can see that it is. it can be clearly seen that the computed Z value is within the rejection region. Therefore, we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Again, since the computed Z value is in the rejection region. So, reject the null hypothesis and of course, accept the, the alternative hypothesis. Or... Uh, uh, for another explanation, that uh, this tells us that the absolute value of the computed Z is greater than the absolute value of the critical Z value. And the discussion, the, uh, the discussion earlier tells us that if the computed value is greater than or the absolute value of the computed value is greater than the absolute value of this critical Z, then we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Example 2. A survey was conducted for overweight students. It was found out that their total cholesterol levels had a mean of 200 mg per deciliter. A researcher randomly selected 20 students from them and had undergone bread-only diet, thinking that it could possibly lower down their cholesterol levels. After the diet program, their mean total cholesterol levels became 213 mg per deciliter, with a standard deviation of 35. Is there enough evidence suggesting that bread-based diet had an effect? Test the hypothesis at significance level 0 0.01. So first, let us list down or identify the given in the problem or in example 2. The given are, the sample mean is 213. This is the sample mean. This mean refers to the sample mean. Then, um, the population mean is 200. The sample standard deviation is 35. This is uh, the standard deviation for the 20 selected students. The sample size is 20 that is identified in the problem. 
uh, level of significance is 0 0.01 that's also given and the degree of freedom is 19 it comes from n n minus 1 that's the formula for df again so that's 20 minus 1 or 19. so we have identified the given in the problem and next is to solve the problem one by one using the steps we have enumerated earlier. So for step one, we have to identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to 200 and the alternative hypothesis is that it is not equal to 200. Because it is not specified in the problem whether it is higher or lower. That means it will be higher or lower. So that means um, it can either be lower or, or above 200. So the alternative hypothesis will use the unequal symbol or inequality symbol, uh, not equal to. Next, for step 2, since the sample size, this is the sample size 20, that's less than 30, and the population standard deviation is unknown, then we have to use the test. What is given here is the mean standard deviation and not the population standard deviation. So we will use t-test for example 2. And this is the formula for t uh, that is equal to the sample mean minus population mean over the quotient between s or sample standard deviation and or s divided by square root of n or sample size by substitute by substitution from this given values that equation or formula will become t equals 213 minus 200 over 35 over square root of 20 213 minus 200 of course is 13 and then you will divide that 13 divide it by the quotient of these two so 35 divided by square root of 20. Divide 13 by the answer to this. And this is what you will get. You have to use your calculator. T is equal to 1.661. Now for step 3, we have to know um, the critical T value using the T table. Since this is... Uh, we used in the alternative hypothesis the inequality symbol not equal to. It is non-directional. We, uh, we will not use one tail. Instead, we will use the test for two tails, two-tailed test. Because if uh, if it is if it has been greater than or less than, then that will be one tail. Uh, that can be left-tailed or right-tailed. But since we used uh, the, uh, the inequality symbol not equal to or non-directional, then uh, we will use the two-tailed test. And from this row, we will find or locate, we will locate the significance level given in the problem, which is 0 0.01. And then the degree of freedom is 19. These two degree of freedom and level of significance will meet at this number or figure 2.861 that corresponds uh, to the critical t value this is the illustration for example 2 uh, if you notice there are two critical values that we consider in the illustration uh, that is so because the alternative hypothesis uses the inequality symbol not equal to which is non-directional if we have used less than or greater than, then we'll know if it is a left-tailed or a right-tailed test to use. But since it is non-directional, then we will consider both tails, the left and the right tails. Uh, in the left part of the curve, we have this critical value negative 2.861. By the way, the, uh, the value 2.861, we've known that from the t-table. Um, okay, let us continue. And uh, from that critical value to its left is the what we call rejection region. That's part of the rejection region. And then on the right part of the curve, the critical T value is 2.861. And to the right of it, from that value to its right, 
will be uh, the second half of the rejection region. And since the area of the rejection region is determined by the level of significance, which is given in this example is 0.01, which is the same as 0.010, then we'll just divide that by 2 um, for us to know the, uh, the area of each of these two rejection regions. So each is 0.05. And the remaining area under the curve is this unshaded part, which of course is 0.99, which we call the acceptance region. Now, let us locate the computed p-value. From step 2, we've known that the computed p-value is 1.661. Of course, that is to the right of a negative uh, critical p-value, and it is also to the left of, or it is less than, the positive critical p-value, which is 2.861. Therefore, it falls under or within the acceptance region. That's why our conclusion is, in step 4, since the absolute value of the computed p-value, that is 1.661, this is already the absolute value, absolute value of positive is positive, uh, since this computed p-value is less than the absolute value of the critical p-value, the absolute value of each of these critical values is positive, even this negative one. Okay, again, since the absolute value of the computed p-value is less than the absolute value of the critical p-value, then we accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, we conclude that there is no enough evidence to support the claim that bread-only diet can decrease total cholesterol levels. I hope you have realized from this lesson that a proof or basis is indispensable in, the, in decision making. Don't just take a side. Weigh things. Consider both sides. Be fair. Even with hypotheses, that's how we accept or reject one. Until next time.